All right, so today I'm gonna use my $150 3D printer to print some real working parts for my rideable electric hovercraft. Stick around to find out how it went. One of the coolest technologies today, in my opinion, is the ability to draw some complex shape on your computer. Press a button and automatically have a working part built right before your eyes. What's even cooler is how this cheap $150 printer sitting on my office bookshelf can print a part strong enough for me to use in my rideable electric hovercraft. Check out my other videos, by the way, if you're interested in finding out how I made this hovercraft from duct tape. The parts I'm printing today are some control arms and pivots for a new rudder system to improve the controllability of my hovercraft. The existing rudders have served me pretty well as I've driven the hovercraft a number of times with them. But since they're only pieces of foam taped to a dowel rod, they've gotten rather sloppy these days, making the hovercraft difficult to control. For the new rudders, I'm gonna use plexiglass sheets that are much stiffer and smoother than the old rudders. Then I'm gonna print the parts that connect these sheets to sockets inside the hovercraft. The first step in the print is to draw it up in a 3D modeling software. I prefer to use SketchUp because it's free and quite easy to use, and it can output an STL file that goes right into the 3D printer. When designing the part, the first step was to make a round pivot that would fit into the socket in the hovercraft and allow free rotation of the rudder. The second step was to make a slot that the plexiglass could easily fit into with a tab that goes down through the whole length of it, allowing strength of the part. And the last step was making a control arm that can connect to the servo in a secure fashion. I purposely made this oversized to allow for maximum strength within the rotation angle permitted. Then the file was exported as an STL for import into the 3D printing software. For 3D printing, I use Repeter Host as the software, which is the free version that came with the printer when I bought it a few years ago. In order to print properly, the 3D model must be rendered as manifold or without any holes. Fortunately, the software has a function to automatically fix this. Next, the model is sliced or broken up into layers for the 3D printing to be able to build it successfully. For the speed of the print, my printer can handle about 30 millimeters a second while still delivering a good quality print. With these print settings, it takes about an hour and a half to print this part. Since I'm using PTEG, I'm using 250 degrees for my print nozzle and 60 degrees for my heated bed. I'm gonna demonstrate the print using the upper pivot, which doesn't include a control arm for timing purposes. All right, so now that we've printed the pivot joints, we need to cut the plexiglass to get it to the correct shape for the new rudder system. After scoring about halfway through, the plexiglass is simply snapped to reveal a nice clean break. Once the tabs have been properly shaped, we're gonna slide the 3D printed pieces on it to test fit it up to the hovercraft. Since the test fit was a success, we're gonna sand the edges down to more of a rounded profile. Now the next step is to permanently epoxy the 3D printed pivots to the plexiglass rudder control surface.
Now that the rudder build is complete, they are stalled into the electric hovercraft and tested for proper functionality. All right, so now that we have this thing fully built, we need to test it to see how strong it really is. So we're gonna run it up to full throttle, move it back and forth and see if anything breaks. Well, that was quite a successful test. It moved back and forth, nothing broke. I could feel it actually directing the wind in either direction. So now we are gonna actually do a little experiment of maneuverability. I'm gonna take it around my small basement and see if I can pivot 360 at either end of the turn. We'll find out how that goes. So in the end, the rudder has greatly improved controllability. It felt way more precise when I was turning, going back and forth at either end. They also handled the wind pressure no problem at all. The wall, not so much. Right there at the end, they had a little bit of breakage, but not really designed to run into a wall. Anyways, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you all next time.